Welcome to another complete story right here at Comic Story and Gaming. Now, you might be wondering where you are and what this is. Well, basically, we here at Comic Story and Gaming take a synopsis of your favorite video game, break it down into the bare bones information that you're going to need, and we give it to you in a rather speedy fashion so that you know what happened in previous games and in your favorite franchises and can move on with the newest title. And with Assassin's Creed Valhalla finally coming out, we thought it would be interesting to tell you the storyline of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which chronologically is the first Assassin's Assassin's Creed game. Not the first one released, but the first one in the timeline. So let's start right there. Layla Hassan has tracked down the Spear of Leonidas, the great Spartan king who fought against the Persians at the Battle of Thermopylae. Aided by the Assassin's organization, Layla has been able to extract two sets of DNA from the Spear. She decides that she's going to delve into the memories of Cassandra using the Animus in order to learn the location of the Staff of Hermes. Now, for those who might be wondering, yes, you can be Cassandra or Alexios, but Ubisoft considers Cassandra to be the canon storyline because she's the one that they put into the novelization. So anyway. Born in Sparta as one of the descendants of Leonidas, Cassandra was trained from a young age by her father to become a strong warrior. She was gifted with the Spear of Leonidas, and it was believed that she would one day become important within the nation. However, the Oracle of Delphi prophesied that her brother, Alexios, would be the ruin of Sparta. Alexios was sacrificed to the gods and thrown from a mountain. Cassandra tried to save her brother, but actually aided in both his and a priest's death. Branded as a traitor to the city-state, Cassandra was thrown from the mountains by her father. The young girl survived the fall, though, and she fled out into the ocean. Armed with only her spear and followed by a mysterious eagle, Cassandra would eventually find herself on the island of Calphalonia, where she would meet the merchant named Marcos. Cassandra would spend her childhood working for Marcos and developing her skills as a strong warrior. Cassandra would grow to become a skilled warrior and find work as a mercenary. And once she was an adult, she would aid Marcos against the local warlord known as the Cyclops. Fighting and stealing from the Cyclops, Cassandra would eventually meet a man named Elpinor, who would hire her to assassinate a powerful Spartan general. When Cassandra pursues the so-called Wolf of Sparta, she is shocked to discover that it is her father, Niccolo shows regret for what he did to her as a child and reveals that he is in fact her stepfather. Cassandra allows Nicholas to live, returning to Elpinor with his helmet instead. Believing that the Wolf of Sparta may be dead, Elpinor reveals his plans on dragging out the war, and he offers her another job, this time to assassinate her own mother. Cassandra of course refuses, and Elpinor orders his men to kill her, and she escapes in the ensuing fight. Now wishing to find her mother, Cassandra travels to ask the aid of the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle reveals the threat of the Cult of Cosmos, who are trying to kill Cassandra and her family, but Cassandra discovers that the Oracle is being controlled by the Cult. After confronting her, the Oracle tells her that Elpinor is one of the cultists and that they are based beneath Apollo's temple. Cassandra confronts Elpinor, killing him and taking his cult uniform as a disguise, along with a strange piece of a pyramid. Traveling beneath the temple, she learns that the cult is trying to take control of Greece and takes part in a strange ritual. The ritual is interrupted, though, as a cult member known as Demonos enters the chamber and claims that there is a traitor amongst them. Each cult member is forced to touch the pyramid, revealing their memories. This is when Cassandra is stunned to discover that Demonos is actually her little brother, Alexios. Alexios kills another cult member, covering for his sister. Cassandra and her allies then travel all over Greece, taking part in the war as well as fighting against the forces of the cult. At times, Cassandra is unable to stop her brother, who continues to work for the cult. He assassinates Percules, who is a political figure working against the cult and goals, and eventually, Cassandra finds her mother, Mirren, who points her in the direction of her real father. Traveling to the island of Thera, Cassandra discovers a door in an Isu temple. Opening the door with the Spear of Leonidas, she discovers her real father. Pythagoras. Pythagoras stands at the entrance of the lost city of Atlantis and explains to Cassandra her heritage. He also tells her that the staff of Hermes has allowed him to live for a very long time. He tells her that his mission is to protect the secrets of the ancient Iso city from mankind, and he sends her on a mission to collect the precursor artifacts so that they can seal the city away forever. Cassandra sets back out over Greece, managing to get revenge for Percules and convince Alexios to join her once again so that their family could live in happiness. With the cult defeated, Cassandra travels to Greece to hunt down the mythological monsters that guard the artifacts the Pythagoras needed to seal Atlantis away. In defeating the monsters, she returns to her father. They both activate a message from the precursor known as Aletheia, who tells them that the Iso's power and knowledge were not meant for humans, 
and will stop them from reaching their full potential. With this task complete, Pythagoras hands his daughter the Staff of Hermes, and he passes on. Seeing this, Layla comes out of the Animus having found the location of the lost city of Atlantis, and she and her team use the ship Altair II to travel to the island of Sanatori. There, Layla is shocked to discover that Cassandra still lives, kept alive by the Staff of Hermes. The ancient Cassandra tells Layla that the world will need the balance of order and chaos in order to survive, and warns that if the Templars or the Assassins ever truly win, the world would end. Before she hands over the staff, Cassandra tells Layla that she is the one who will bring the balance to the world, and she gives her her staff, and she dies in Layla's arms. Layla nods, knowing that there is still much of Cassandra's life and memories that could aid them, and with this knowledge, she decides that she will return to the Animus and continue the journeys of Cassandra's life. As her memories continued long before she rested in Atlantis, she travels to Macedonia, where she met Darius. Darius acts as an assassin against the Order of the Ancients. The Order is hunting down Darius and his son Nauticas, as they see them as tainted ones who will someday destroy the world. Darius and Cassandra work together to kill the Order's huntsmen, and with this done, Darius leaves the country with his son. However, Cassandra meets Darius once again when she travels to Echia. They once again fight against the Order, who are killing Macedonian refugees in an attempt to stop Darius from fleeing. And once again, the group manages to stop the Order and allow the refugees to escape Macedonia. Afterwards, the group decides to live in Macedonia, and Cassandra falls in love with Nauticas. And together, they have a son, and they name him Opadios. Retiring from her life of war and mercenary work, Cassandra settles down to raise her family. But the Order has not given up, and they attack the village where the family resides. Killing Nauticas and stealing Cassandra's son, Darius and Cassandra travel to Messenia and assault the Order's stronghold. Together, they defeat the Order's current leader, and they save Elpidos. Yet, Cassandra knows that her son will never be safe with her. So Darius takes the boy traveling to Egypt. Knowing that she must unlock the secrets of the Staff of Hermes, Cassandra travels to Elysium Fields and meets with the members of the Isu race that the humans worship as gods. Cassandra speaks with Hermes, learning more about his staff while also dealing with the infighting between the gods. Cassandra aids the rebellion of Adonis against Persephone, helping them reach victory, and with this done, Hermes and Cassandra ask that Persephone opens the path between Paradise and Hades. After Persephone throws Hermes off a cliff, she reveals that the key to the gate of Hades was on her dog's collar. So she tosses Cassandra, the dog, and the apple of Eden within. The dog, Rose, is revealed to be Cerberus, the guardian of Hades, and Cassandra is forced to defeat this mighty creature but manages to come out victorious. With Cerberus defeated, she is approached by Hades himself. With the death of the guardian of Hades, the portals begin to open up into Tartarus. Hades orders Cassandra to find new guardians for the gates of Hades, and with this done, she asks Hades to teach her more about the staff. But the Lord of the Underworld demands that Cassandra be his fifth guardian, forcing her to fight him. Before she can defeat Hades, Poseidon arrives, taking Cassandra to Atlantis. Arriving in the ancient city, the god of the sea offers to make Cassandra his second in command, hoping that since she is half Isu, she can quell some of the tensions between the Isu and the human people. Working in the city to learn more about the staff, Cassandra discovers that some of the Isu have been abducting humans and experimenting on them, creating massive creatures of mythology. After Cassandra defeats the latest project, Olympios, she returns to Poseidon and informs him that Atlantis cannot be saved. Working together, Cassandra and Poseidon destroy the city of Atlantis, and with this done, Layla suddenly awakens in the Animus, and it is revealed that she is experiencing the memories of Alethea, the Isu who acted as Poseidon's second before the fall of Atlantis. The Isu recorded these memories so that Layla could learn to use the Staff of Hermes for the future. However, Abstergo attacks the Assassin's Lair, hoping to obtain the Staff of Hermes so that they are able to survive the end of the world. Layla manages to defeat the Templars and re-establish contact with the Assassins. Now you may be wondering why they did the whole Cassandra shows up and reveals that she's alive and then we go back into the memories. That was the DLC chapter. So the first one with Darius was the Legend of the First Blade and the second one was the Atlantis chapters. But that is the full story of Assassin's Creed Odyssey in however long it took us to get there. I'll put it in the title, but I don't know at the time of recording these. I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll be bringing you Assassin's Creed Origins very, very soon. But now we're getting you set up for Valhalla. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed, leave it down below. I can make more videos about it. I love this franchise. I'm all about it. So thank you guys so much for your support, and I will see you next time right here.